here with Ron Dante from the legendary... Yeah. Archie's! I have a, a question to ask you about the Archie's. What did it feel like? Now, this is just so cool to me, to see your single on a cereal box. I gotta tell you, it was the biggest thrill in the world. I remember Post Sugar Crisp put our record, Sugar Sugar, and a few other of the cuts from the Archie's on the back of that box in plastic, and you could actually play it maybe 20 or 30 times. And it was a thrill to see it there, because they printed up 10 million boxes Whoa. that year, and there's still boxes around on eBay that people can buy, but it was a real kick to see it there. I imagine all these children were growing up, eating breakfast and playing my music. So it was great. That, that's just got to be such a thrill. Now, what, what are some of your favorite moments from being in the Archies? Well, I have to tell you, the, the day it went number one on, on, the, on the American charts, and it sold over three to four million records, I found that out. That was a thrill to know that the, the music you made, the, you know, the singing, had finally gotten to every radio station in America, and it became number one. And also, the day it, I found out it was the number one record of the year, that Billboard magazine voted it the number one record of the year above the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and the Fifth Dimension. And that was a big thrill. So Ron, uh, we know that you sang with a lot of studio bands. You had a lot of hits. And uh, what, what are some of the more famous songs that we might know? And would you care to bust out a couple of those? Well, one of my hits was by a ghost group called The Cufflinks. And it was the same month and the same year that Sugar Sugar was number one. The Cufflinks record, of my record of Tracy, was number five. So I had two records in the top ten, and people still didn't know it was me because I was a ghost singer. Uh, Tracy went, Tracy, when I'm with you, something you do bounces me off the ceiling. Tracy, day after day, when you're this way, I get a loving feeling. And that was number five, and it also sold a million records that year. It was a lot of fun. I was also in a, a novelty group called The Detergents, which was a very mid-60s, and we were an answer to Mary Weiss's Shangri-La's record of Leader of the Pack. It was called Leader of the Laundromat. We were kind of like the first Weird Al. Really, we were doing parodies of hits. And that was like a strange thing we put together in the studio one night that also became a big hit. So I was the voice of the three of those groups and about six other groups that had records out. One group was called The Pearly Gate. One was called The Two Dollar Question. We made up names as we went along because it was funny, I never got sued. And nobody yeah. sued me because I was on like six labels at a time. You, they didn't know. You are leading a charmed life. Wait, number one hits, cereal box, <laughs> never got sued. And by the way, since you inspired Weird Al. Weird Al kind of inspired the entire YouTube generation, so that means you inspired the entire YouTube generation. I like being an inspiration to all those generations. I must say, I love YouTube because everything we've ever done is on YouTube. Yes. You have to be very careful what you do, like this interview. Yes. You have to be very careful. This will definitely be on <laughs> YouTube, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Probably not by, by us, maybe, or somebody else. Yeah, yeah. No, no, but it'll be great. And, I, and thank you for doing Cool. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to? Thank you, guys. All right, thank you so much, thank Ron. You. Wonderful meeting you. Bye. Wonderful meeting you. And by the way, I love Sugar Sugar, so yeah. it's really an honor. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye -bye.